Max, Max, what's the turn out of my lifestyle? Smoking green, blowing white clouds to build the blue skies Conversating with the gods by my wildflower To let them know that it's the gods I would This love's the never ending saga Gods by my wildflower To let them know that it's the gods I would This love's the never ending saga Gods by my wildflower To let them know that it's the gods I would This love's the never ending saga Gods by my wildflower To let them know that it's the gods I would This love's the never ending saga Walk through the sands of times like Gara On the other side Side of that gat is karma, you wet product, the devil like inside your box now while the angels fly over my headstone. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. We are back with another episode of the God's Hour podcast with your boy Big Serbs back in the motherfucking place to be La Merca Superior, Palace 81 Studios. And today I have a very special guest in the building, in the restroom, in fucking, you know, wherever he is, parts unknown, fucking wherever. You can tell him, bro, you can tell him. <laughs> no, I really don't know where you at, bro, you know what I mean? Oh, shit. We should just keep it like that, you know what I mean? Like, like for all you know, you in a bomb shelter, in a bomb shelter in somewhere in that. Slovenia or whatever the fuck they got That's slaves funny. out there, you know what I mean? But, um... Tell tell the people, man. Tell tell the audience, you know, who you are. Bet. We'll just start it from there. Yo, for sure. I mean, you gotta let it be known, bro. I mean, I connected on the show, you know, I say heavy peeping the, you know, the flips, you know, the freestyles and all that, you know. I feel like there's not enough of that just you know, everywhere on the on the airwaves, you feel me? So you know, I fucks with that super heavy. So I thought, you know, the A-like type thing to do was to reach out, you know. Um, first and foremost, I'm part of a group called Judge Mankind. So Judge Mankind is consistent of two MCs, which is myself. I'm one voice. You know, I'm hailing out of Florida, but I'm here in Vegas. So for y'all this, you know, FBI, whoever needs me, I'm over here uh, in Vegas. You know, I'm pretty sure they already got a stack of files on you. Yeah. They already got <laughs> They got it. You fucked up. You thought you thought you was you was safe just putting it out there. Really? But they are, little did you know they already had you. They got right, two right, agents right. on you. They got the dogs on you. The Listen, helicopter is gonna be flying through. Yeah, no one wants to be out here right now. It's too hot. So I figured. Oh you know my mean? god, bro! It's, it's been super hot, bro. Like the last. Crazy. It's kind of been cool, kind of like the last day or two over here. But bro, like the last, I don't know, two weeks have been like fucking hell, bro. Where are you out in the, yeah, I know you're spot out there, but that's crazy, man. That's crazy, bro. Yeah, I stay in Ontario. So over here, it's kind Word. of like more desert versus LA. You're more by the coast. Really? I didn't know that. Yeah, because yeah, like LA is more closer to Long Beach, and Long Beach is like the coolest place you could you could stay in, uh, besides, I guess, like Santa Monica, or like one of the best, or one of the beach places. But Word. Ontario, man, is like, I think almost like 30 or like around 30 miles away east of LA. So the further east you go and north you go, the hotter it get, gets. Like, especially Palm Springs, it be getting, like, up to, like, 114 out there and shit like that. That's Texas, Word. brother, bro. That's, you got to have a revolver on. You got to have a pistol on. You know what I mean? To be in that weather, bro. I'd be mad That's at crazy. Fuck, dog, nah, this, it, it gets cool out here, though, bro, during the winter, though, man. The winter, it's, it's down to 35, you know what I mean? Like thirty five degrees. The, the slot machines and shit, or what? You be you be on the corner shooting dice. No, yeah. <laughs> everybody in Vegas got. I mean, I mean, those are the visitors, bro. Those are the tourists. You know what I mean, those are the the lost ones, bro. I've never seen. Uh, you know, just to say, I've never seen like slot machines in every gas station in my life, bro. Until I moved here, man. Oh, so, I bet, bro. I bet everyone, every ever. This they got Popeyes with slot machines in them, bro. What the fuck? Yeah, Vegas is different, bro. Vegas is a it's a it's a playground, bro. It's cool, but if you live here, bro, you ain't out in the strip, bro. You're not you're not out there if you live here, bro. You know what I mean? That's what I heard because I got a homie who stayed. Uh, I don't know if he stays there now, but I got a homie right. who stayed in Vegas, and he told me it's like you know people who really stay in Vegas, they're not on the strip, they're not they're not in the casinos like at all. They're like, uh, from right. what I heard, Vegas is, like, really, like, run down, or it's, like, really, like, fucking... It's, it, it's small, bro. It's small. I'm from Miami, bro. I'm, I'm a Miami boy, bro. I, you know, that's, that's 15, 16 years of my life down there, bro. You know what I mean? 
So like being here two years, bro, that's that city itself, bro. You could fit that into Fort Lauderdale, bro. If you know what I mean, that's like a 20 mile city, bro. Like you could, you could just put that in there. Bro. Like Vegas is tiny dog. Like you could be out of there in 45 minutes and you on your way to California, bro. Like it's, it's the tiniest place I ever lived, bro. They actually say, bro, if you, you careful who you run into, you gonna run into them soon again here in Vegas. They said Vegas is too small. Oh, like everybody. Shit. Yeah, they said Vegas because I'm only here two years, bro. Two years, two years in October. So I'm digging it, man. You know, weed's legal. Weed's not legal in Florida. So, you know, this West Coast thing is y'all. Are, I mean, it's West Coast, it's a specific time frame. So it's like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm proud to be a fucking, you know, West Coast thing in that, bro. Like, <laughs> oh, I don't for care, sure, bro. bro. The West, the West oh. Coast. But Vegas is like, to me, Vegas is like its own thing. Like it's not even West Coast, East, South. It's none of that shit. It's like Sin City for real. Like you might it's, be on a fucking island or some shit. It's it's in the middle of nowhere, bro. It's in the middle of nowhere. It really is. You gotta pass really by is. like fucking, you know, however many bodies have been buried out there <laughs> before you even get to see one person out that big. Bro, there's history out there, man. Like those roads and everything. Like oh for like, sure. I mean, you seen Casino? You seen the movie Casino? Oh, for sure, man. I I have no doubt that that you know Whoa. you fucking could get buried so easily out there, and no one will ever know, find out all that shit. That's wild, bro. Like, like <laughs> I don't I, like a Mexico in that sense. I always tell people Mexico is one of those places where you could someone could shoot you, bury you. And then that's it. Like that's that's that, bro. Like that's that. Can't. That's wild, bro. Yeah, it's not really yeah. much, you know, unless mm-hmm. someone's really gonna try to come looking for you, you know. But if you get no altercation and you just shoot somebody and shit and you just find right. yourself real quick and you just do it like that, it's really nothing, not no forensics is gonna come out there. No, no that that's shit. funny. That's, that's crazy though. Like, nah, man, I hear you, bro. That's crazy. Like, yeah, man, I'm I'm happy to be out here right now, dog. So for sure, for right now, though. So everything's straight, man. You know what I mean? Well, like, like, let's let's get to your story first. So you said right. from Miami. From Miami, bro. Yeah. So it's like 12, no, 12, 13, 14 full years there. I, I went to the military. So I dipped out, went to Texas, you know, I went to Korea. Um Oh wow, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Cause, so uh, like, you know, two of my producers, they're from uh, South Korea. I don't know if you went to the north. You went yeah. and, and did some SBI. Well, look, G, nobody's allowed in the north, bro. There's not a single American that ever been to the north, really. For real? <laughs> nah, there's got a lot of bro. CIA agents out there that fuck bro. Up. They you can't even buy a ticket to North Korea. It don't matter how much money you got. You can't buy a ticket to North Korea. Can you imagine if, like, you were on a plane and your shit, like, crash-landed in that motherfucker? Bro, that's oh, it. Oh, fuck no. Your boy was from, your boys, your boys were from South Korea, right? Yeah, uh, Adobe Premier and then his that's brother, it. Noah Crab. I don't know what he goes by. It's like, his shit now is N- 9 UN, 9 UN, 9 UN. Nice. Okay. I don't know what that means, though. I don't know what kind of Matrix code shit he's on. That's, that's hilarious. Like, I was out there in 04, bro. I was out there in 04. 04, damn. Yeah. A whole year, bro. A whole year. So it was you crazy, just, bro. You were you were straight up just shooting South Koreans and shit? Nah, get the fuck out of here, bro. <laughs> bro so what we was were you doing, bro? You were, you, were, you were fucking uh, making Korean sandwiches and shit out there? Yo, it's like, we would buy... Listen, bro, I, I don't want to say much. We just say, like... We, we were paying for things we didn't need to pay for in South Korea, but <laughs> yeah. I know, I know what that means. A lot of the listeners, some of the listeners got, I had no idea what that meant, but I know. Like, you uh, know, bro, Korea, South Korea is like, it's it's for the soldiers. You feel me? Like the soldiers visit there and it's all for them. They love Americans. It's it's cool, bro. That place is, it's a, it's a place to find a good wife, bro. I'll say that. And you bring her home to America, because they all want your ticket, bro. They want you as a big ticket. They got to get out of there. So, look, you know, they'll come to America with you, bro. Oh, for real? Bro, a lot of them want to yeah. come over here? Yo, sir, if you go out there, bro, and if you got there for a week, you try to come back, you're going to have to try to shrug them off you before you're on the plane. <laughs> that's fucking I'm telling you, bro. That's crazy. That's, a lot of Americans don't want Koreans, but that's... No, nah, I'm just fucking... I mean, let's say Koreans are they're beautiful women, too, man. They are. I bet, bro. Co- Co- you know? Korea's South, especially South Korea, has, like, a lot of history embedded just from, like, fucking, like, the Korean War 
Uh, yeah, bro. Them splitting from the north. You know, we got bases out there, like a fucking Dodger Stadium and shit like that. So it's really like, it's really interesting. Like, yeah, that's true. That's it. That's true. That's yeah. Culture, you know what I mean? No, nah, that's true, bro. Everything like over on that area, you feel me? Like, pretty much. And then you got the Squid Games over there. So it's that's like, popping. That's popping. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, now you know? everybody wants to see Korea or some shit like that. Everyone wants to participate in the games, get a hoodie and an AR and all that shit. That's funny. I mean, you know what's wild too, bro? Like when I was out there, like they they definitely embraced a lot of the American hip hop back then. You know what I mean? Like, cause you know, you feel me? I'm a little older, bro. So like being out there in 04, you know, like if 04, it was still like we were still, you know, what was that, four years away from the 90s, right? So they were still on that break dancing shit over there, bro. Crazy shit, like I served and all that. Pop, 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 bro, they're doing like ciphers, ciphers. They're still doing ciphers out there. Oh shit! Yeah, in oh four, they still had they still had scribble jam. Scribble jam was still around, and they had oh, so you know about scribble jam, scratch battles and everything. Of course, man, I'm I'm up on. Uh, I'm not gonna say I'm up on everything, but at least like from 2000 on and now, like I'm pretty like. Word, word. On, on a lot of the shit, because, like, around 2000, that was, like, Y2K. So, like, everything yeah. from, like, the clothes, like, everything got baggy. I mean, everything was ba- uh, baggy uh, then, but it was just kind of, like, everyone seemed like they knew G-Unit or, like, Dipset. Right, right. In, like, 04 or something. Like, like just depending on where you were, you were either, like, a break dancer or, like, a B-boy or like some something something of that nature, but like hip hop right. really, really took like I feel like from two thousand that's when it splintered off. So you have like the the fucking what's that shit the crunk era. You had the break dance. You had all these genres that I, I felt split off and evolved into like the trap music or like you know like thirty south shit like that. But right. um, I was gonna build off what you were saying, bro. Like yeah, like. In 04, bro, it was about the internet cafes out there in Korea, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So so Ninth Wonder was, like, the hottest shit in the underground, bro, besides, like, Cage and Eastern Conference and Copyright and, you know, all those dudes from, like, Eastern Conference era and, like, th- like what, what was keeping everyone together was, like, the rise of, like, the internet. You feel me? Like, the internet and the forums was, like, the thing in 04, bro. So it was, like, you know, you're, like, connected with people. I'm in the Korea, like, so in the mix with what's going on in America, you feel me? So it's just kind of crazy seeing like, what, what's 2023 almost, bro? So it's like in 04, you would never thought this is how far it would take with the internet. In 04, that was like, you basically, you in the internet cafes, you know what I mean? You didn't have the phones, right? So you in the internet cafes, and they're 24 hours, bro, and (laughs) you know, you sit there and eat all day. So it's crazy, bro, like how a lot of shit changed just from like, that early era of the, like you said, the 04 is when the internet was popping off, bro. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's when everybody had a fucking cell phone in their pocket. The the phones weren't fucking a bur- looking like a brick and shit with the antenna <laughs> on that shit looking like a military <laughs> officer, or whatever the fuck. It was like it was a whole different thing, bro. And I was like, I I don't like saying my age, but basically I was like a kid, bro. And I I still remember when the fucking they hit the tower when 9-11, when they hit the towers and everything. I remember that day, even though that was like a little bit before then. But I, I still remember like how shit was. That's bad wild. That's bad wild you mentioned that, though. Yeah, that's crazy, though. I remember how quiet it was, bro. Like after they hit the towers, it was like, what the fuck, bro? Like if we don't if we don't get every Mexican we could find and send them out to Afghanistan right now, it's going to be so <laughs> Yeah, man. I mean, like. All that shit changed everything, right, man? Like, like, like. I mean, like, you, you, yo. Know, so, okay, so you, you were born like the very end of the nineties, right? Yeah, like I was born. I was pretty much like. I really don't like saying my name, but like, fucking when, when pretty much when Big Pun's album came out, I was born. Let's just put it that way. You know what I mean? Capital Punishment. I think so. It was that ninety eight? That's ninety eight. Ninety eight. It's ninety eight. Born in '98, bro. That was- wow, bro, you're you're those Blues. Uh, you know who Ados Shout out to Ados Blues if no one knows. You Ados Blues' um, age. Yeah, you told me that uh, uh, on the yeah. 
Instagram, bro. Fucking. That's I'm, wild, bro. Yo, know. sure. Listen, let me ask you something, man. What's that? How? Okay, because because it's like. What's going on? We lost him. He must have pressed the button by accident. Let me try to invite him. Invite him back in. Whoa, what happened there? Oh, you sideways now, bro. What's going on? And I can't hear you. Okay. Word, you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, but you sideways, bro. What's going on? What the fuck just happened? Hold on, hold on. I don't know. I thought you pressed the wrong button or something. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Let's get back to this, bro. What's that wire right there? You wearing a wire right now? What's that? Nah, I'm trying to charge, bro. I'm in some crazy setup right now, dog. It does look crazy, man. Looks like it looked like you were breaking up weed on like a broken toilet bowl or some shit. Bro, like th this is what it is, bro. This is a raw table. You feel me? Like we just get, you know, we getting twisted, bro. Had that raw table since raw came out, bro. You didn't. <laughs> <laughs> bro, listen. Broke down a thousand backwards, a thousand switches. No, bro. That's all. It's all this, bro. Look, it's all this little baby right here, though. This little baby right here. Oh, the resin. That's what it is. It's, uh, you got to just scrape it off and it won't come off, dog. So that's, you know, yeah. it's whatever. It's whatever. But, yo, what was we at, dog? Oh, holy shit. What was I was he saying my at? age and you were saying something about <sighs> about that, you know, my age and age or whatever. And then your phone fell. Okay, here we go. This is a comedy skit, bro. This is comedy, too, bro. We get, you know, we're discussing comedy here, too. But, dog, nah, listen, bro, like, I don't know how, like, the younger, younger era, bro, is tuned in still. Like, I don't know how y'all... Like, cause us, like, we had that shit in our face. You feel me? Like, you hear me? No, yeah, I, I was just oh, talking, right, right. talking with some shit over here on my computer. Like, like, yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we had that shit in our face, bro. So it's like, how do y'all have that frequency, bro? How do y'all come up with that frequency? It's like, that's mad wild, bro. Like, I don't know how. Honestly, you, it's just about like how how you're tapped in. You know what I mean? It, it, it's kind of like. You gotta be you, you either you either in this culture or you're not. That's like the oh, you're not. I could describe it because you know there's there's people out there that wanna wanna rap. Um they wanna rap, but they're not necessarily trying to rap like the way we're trying to do it. They're trying to be like Lil Wayne, they're trying to be like Young Thug, they're trying to sing and rap like Drake or do some J. Cole type shit. I'm, I literally grew up on Jedi mind tricks. Okay, okay. Fucking Big L, Red Man. Uh, like, I'm talking about early, like, the first rap music I listened to was, like, Dr. Dre, fucking Snoop Dogg. Uh, uh, I could just go on. I had an uncle, uh, he's a DJ, but he has, like, everything. I mean, he told me he has, like, a record that Dr. Dre came out with, um, I think when he was with NWA that he only pressed out like a hundred copies or something. He's like, man, if I show Dr. Dre this record, he'd be like, what the fuck? Like, how do you have this record? Something like that. I wish I could like see it or like, you know, I want to do a podcast That's wild. with my uncle too. But basically my uncle uh, contributed a lot to like, you know, he put me on a black moon and shit like that. So it was kind of like, you know, you just got to uh, tap in, you know. That's wild. A lot of the kids now, you know, they listen to, you know, like their first fucking shit they were listening to was probably like Sean Kingston or oh, God. Fucking, like, I can't even, like, I wouldn't even know what the first music they would listen to, but it'd definitely be, be like Kids Bob 12 or some <laughs> shit like that. You know what I mean? There wasn't me fucking Shaggy and Sean Paul. Oh, God. I love, I love Sean Paul too, and I love all that shit too, but. You know, I, well, I, I came from before. I mean, the shit I listened to and I love is before that, for sure. Right, right. Nah, that's mad. That's like, yeah, I like the R&B from that time frame, too. You feel me? Like, I like a lot of, like, okay, this is why I'll, I'll just put it like, you like, in, in the 90s, there was more variety. I feel like, you know, West Coast got it shine, right? Really heavy and all that. And then once it came to, like, 2001, too, they, like, this is just an opinion they thought, bro. Yeah, you know I mean, this is that old head 
you know, persona thought, like, they brought it to the South, and it's like, boom, it ain't ever left the South, bro. So it's kind of like, like you said, everybody wants to do one, your thug. So if everybody's hearing that in the frequency and airways at these times, how do they even know other things existed? And I'm talking about the youngest, youngest. Like, how do they see whatever else is tapped in to be tapped into? You know what I mean? Like, like, because at least in the 90s, there was everything. There was that, there was your woo, there was the commercial ass jaw, there was everything to bounce off of. Because I'm from like the 95 pack. Whatever that song is. Which one? Fucking, what did that for? All I need is my baby, whatever the fucking song Bro, is. Bro, you had your DMX. You had your DMX and then you had your jaw rule. You had your DMX and jaw rule. That's what I'm saying. You had a variety, bro. You had so much in the 90s to look at, right? You had juvenile and no limit at the end. You feel me? Mm -hmm. So it's like, what about now, though? It's kind of like, you know. Well, now we got like Griselda. We got. Now now we got Griselda. Yeah. 2016. It was a big gap for a while. It was a big gap. You know, but but there were some artists out there. You know, I mean, you we you had your dooms, you had you had Mad Lib, you know, um, right? Uh, you had like Royce the Five Nine. You had Crooked Eye, uh, um, right? I'm trying to think. You know, a TDE. You got Absol Kendrick. Uh, I'm, I'm talking about before they blew up. I'm talking like this is like old. Like this is ten. That's yeah, right, right. And, um, but yeah, I mean, Saigon Pap, Saigon Papoos. Okay, well, there you go. Yeah, talk that shit, because it's like, you know, I don't want us to speak on this topic, like, if if real hip-hop never left and shit. We've always held it down, but it's like, the the era of where of where mm-hmm. hip-hop was at it, it, its peak, and everyone fucked with it, and everyone loved it, it's just not there anymore. It's just kind of like, right. and, a, and it's something else, like I told you, like, when, when, uh, like fucking shit, like it wasn't me, Shaggy, and all that. You know, them friends, right. boys, and the South was taking over in the Bling era. You know, that was that was when kind of the culture was moving towards, and it really hasn't never left. And it's really weird wow. when you think about it because the South was running shit in the early two thousands uh, or whatever it is, but that really wasn't when when the culture took over, it really took over. Like now it was like a boomerang. Like it, it showed up and then it came back around. But, um, look, bro. I mean, like it's going to be real hip hop is what the fuck I'm trying to tell you. Word. So real shit. Cause it's mad crazy, bro. Y'all, you know, y'all, y'all kids. Yeah. I mean, I don't even say kids like that, but it's like, yeah, if you 25 and you tapped in and you like, like to me, when I hear your people's, you feel me? Uh-huh. Especially they from the other side of the world, bro. Like Ados is from Japan. You feel me? Like, where do they get this this super inspiration to to knock out like these joints like this, bro? Because like, I can see where I get it from. Mm-hmm. I could, you know, I, I God bless me, bro. I hate to say it that way. If I sound if I sound selfish, bro, I do, bro. I'm thank God I'm 38 years old, bro. I got the witness like heaven on earth, bro. I'll tell you what it was. It was when all the rappers from the 90s when they would do their world tours in Russia. In Japan, okay, Switzerland, they took their music there. They had such a strong fan base that their fan base it never left, bro. It stayed there. And there's motherfuckers still in those places today that are like, we need a Wu Tang show. We need a Swiss. Right. That's why they get so much money going overseas because them motherfuckers will pay a uh, fucking thousand just to go see Method Man, to see a, a a cannabis, to see a Fat Joe because they remember back in the nineties you know, their fathers or their big brothers or whatever or right. those shows. And then their little brothers or their little cousins or they had kids, they want to get into music and they remember having their dad's vinyls or, their, you know, their big brother's vinyls and they just have them shits, bro. Like, I feel like that's like a big contribution. It might not be everything because with the internet now, you could just look up, oh, fucking, you know, Method Man show or whatever or, or or you know the fucking judgment day 2000 and all that shit and boom you got it you know that's wild bro i mean this i mean i'm glad it's still where it's at now like you mentioned bro like griselda was like it's a different form but that like to me that was like now it jumped off a whole different like you feel me everybody's kind of like everybody does want the sound back bro that's what i love about this four five was now it's been seven years almost six years now since what it's been, oh, what's it been like 
five years since Griselda popped off and kind of like um 16 is when I heard 2016 yeah. when I heard. Oh, so the, the first time I heard Griselda was in 2015. Word, really? Yeah, like uh around uh Hitler three when Hitler three wild. Yeah, that's when I I, I I was it was really weird, bro, because I was really in a rock marciano at that time. And I got on my YouTube, and we're just talking about him too. So I know, I know. That's why it's funny that's how everything life is a circle, bro. No shots to Rock Marcy out there, but uh, we can discuss, no, bro. When we are live, bro, listen, I'm gonna tell you, this is the most un what's it, unpopular opinions you're gonna hear. It's just the truth, sure, bro. Uh, it's the truth. But what happened was, I, I was like, I was, uh, I was still in high school, and I was fucking nice. I was, uh, I was. I think I came home from school and fucking I was on YouTube and I looked up this song featuring Rock Marciano and I'm like, oh shit, Rock Mars got a new song because I was bumping Marsberg, Reloaded and shit like that. Um, and the reason why I even started listening to Rock Marciano is because I was watching a Sean Price interview where he's like, go buy my album and then go buy Reloaded. So Word. he put me on on the fucking Rock Marcy. So anyway, sure. I look up, there's this song called Rex Ryan, and I see a, a dude and it looked like he got bullet bullet holes in his in his neck. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what is this? And as soon as I turned that shit on, I was like, what the fuck? Like, who are these dudes? And and uh, it just started from there, man. Oh. So, um, but, but to be honest, man, Wes has been rapping since like fucking yeah. forever, bro. Like since he was a yeah. kid, whatever. But I feel like once they signed the Shady, that was when you saw like this big yeah. like, influx. Like I remember um when they went to the apartment 4B in Los Angeles on Fairfax. What? Yeah, bro. Um in 2017, what? when they first signed the Shady, this That's is mad mad. they just announced that they had signed. Um and keep in mind, Fairfax isn't a hip hoppy place. Fairfax is like where the hipsters go to buy Supreme clothes. You know, these little white kids with their mom's credit cards, they buy the hundreds, they buy shit from uh, Cantors and shit. Aw, oh, damn, is this shit? It says it's running out of time. What the fuck? It says, you see that shit? It says time left. Nah. Minutes. I don't see that. Nah. Are well, you recording it? It's still recording, but fucking. What the fuck? Hold on. Hold on, bro. Pause for a minute. I know exactly what I was talking about. Oh, okay. 15 minutes? 15 minutes. $15 a month? What, this is the Zoom thing? Yeah. Fuck Zoom. Fuck you. <laughs> We're going to do another meeting anyway when it cuts off anyway, so it don't even matter. All right, all right. We got this, bro. We got this. But anyway. Okay. It's still recording, though, right? It's still recording. We're good. All right, back, back. Okay. Uh, listen, bro. Listen, bro. Let me listen real quick, dog. Like, like, like Fairfax and Melrose, like the area, like, is that what you mean? Like Fairfax and... Yeah. Uh, bro, that is like, that place is so beautiful, dog. Like that view, all that, like... It's really nice. Uh, bro, you have met, like, okay, so when 2020 popped off, bro, the pandemic. I was... The pandemic, I came and flew out here for $15, bro. I flew out to LA for $15, bro. And I was like, my boy opened up a pizza, a pizza shop, long story short. And yo, every day we was just bumping out the latest Makami right up and down those streets, bro. The latest Conway right up and down the streets, bro. The latest West, like, I fucking rented a Toyota Tacoma. So it was bumping, the system was bumping or whatever. But that place is mad crazy, bro. Like, I like that place a lot, bro. That's Hollywood, right? It's what? That's basically Hollywood? Yeah, like, it's, I think it's considered, uh, like, West Hollywood. That, okay. It's definitely Hollywood. You, you're not far from the Walk of Fame and, and gotcha. the theater and all that shit. Um, but basically, like, Fairfax used to be full of, like, skaters. I mean, I think it still has skaters, too, but, like, there's hipsters and, and it's just kind of, like, it's just a melting pot of people that come to spe spend their money. I would consider it like a tourist attraction. Word. But you know, when Odd Future was around, they a lot of those kids were there. Like a lot of Odd Future fans, they wanted to 
Tyler, they wanted to go and see Frank Ocean and all that shit. Frank Ocean was never there. So all you are future kids out there who thought you was going to see Frank Ocean, yeah. <laughs> you fucking wasted like $100 in gas to go see nobody, bro. You went and bought a fucking shirt that fucking had an upside down cross on it. All those words. <laughs> they done, they done fucked a lot of a lot of the culture up out there, but um, that's funny, bro. But I remember when Wes, when it was Wes, Benny, what? Uh, uh, Conway, uh, Chef Dread was there. Um, I don't know if El Camino was there. I know, I remember seeing really. Him. Yeah, I remember seeing him at the show, which was the next. Uh, I think it was the next day. But Where? I don't remember, or actually, no, I think he was there. I think he was there at the apartment 4B. Why wouldn't he? If he was at the show, why wouldn't he be at the pop-up? Yeah, yo, so you you seen them from afar? I said, what's up to them? I shook their hand. What? Didn't I tell you that I, uh, I showed uh, uh, Conway the bootleg CDs that I had of theirs? Because I had a car that had CD only. I'm not like one of these kids with the ox and shit, bro. Like, I'm, I'm, I was for real. Like, I, I would put their... That's Classic, the CDs, and I would just have it in my car because I, I didn't want to fuck up the original copies of, of like the shit, you know what I mean? So Word. I would just burn it on an, on another disc and I would just be uh, driving to school like that. Um, I remember showing Conway the bootleg Reject 2 and I remember him just looking at it and he just laughed and he's like, yo, Wes. And he's like, he's like, look, and he shows him the CD and Wes is like, he says something like, like, we made it, or like, nigga, we made it, or some shit like that. Something funny where I was like, damn, Yo, like, he found me for that shit. But I was that's like, classic. Oh, like, hey, I'm not trying to like uh, sell your shit. Like, I'm not right. Right. So, like, this is like for my own personal shit and all that. And uh, that's yeah, classic, bro. Derringer, I remember kicking it. Uh, I remember not kicking it, but I remember uh, talking with Derringer and, uh, yeah, I remember. I remember asking him like all like a bunch of questions, but I remember asking him like, "Yo, what's the craziest beat you ever make?" You got to think up until this point, you know, Fly got dropped. Uh, fucking Reject Two was uh, I think dropped uh, like right before that. I think it was the new shit. That Ooh. was the newest shit. Reject uh, on steroids. Yeah. On steroids. Yeah. Um, Ooh, remember Saint Regis? What song uh, is that? A song Saint Regis. With uh Saint Regis with uh with Conway, it's a singing. This is like a singing soul sample. That's the song. What is that Conway? Conway, yeah. Is that on the album? Yeah, it's on Reject on steroids. Oh, uh, to be honest, bro, I don't know the names of the songs. I wow, just you, if you heard it, you you'd be like, yeah, that's yeah, one I, name, bro. I know, yeah. yeah, bro. To be honest, bro, I remember the 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 first time listening to that album was at three in the morning when I dropped off my cousin in Crenshaw in the hood. I'll never what? forget that. Yeah, I'll never forget. I'll never forget how just fitting that album was. I'm like, yo, I gotta tell Conway the story of how fucking the nah. first listen of reject on steroids. I was driving through the hood, like, man, I hope nobody starts shooting, bro. Cause there's like <laughs> you know when you don't see nobody around right. at corner, you're like, you don't know if a fucking shell's gonna hit you or what the fuck is gonna happen. Are you from here, bro. You from there. That's crazy though. I'm not from LA. I'm not from Crenshaw, but like, I but know from, I'm from the West. You know what I mean? I know. That's what I mean. You know how it is over there. Yeah, I know. I know the politics. I know what hats you should right. have and all that shit like that. But, uh. Cause you gotta remember, bro. I'm an East Coast. You know, I'm an East Coast yeah, you a Southerner. You feel me? So. Yeah. You, you from, uh, you from where every West Coast, every West Coast, person out here is kind of like you know I wonder what they doing right now you know what I mean I, or like I wonder how, how they get down you know what I mean because like it just depends on you like from a hip-hop perspective it, it's kind of like we always envy New Yorkers because y'all like from over there and I'm pretty sure New Yorkers envy like West Coast people because like we're from over here look man I will say this the 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 the, the northerners they definitely are jealous of the weather bro because the weather, bro, the West Coast weather is the best weather I ever felt in my life, bro. For sure. The best ever. Dog. Like, I, I mean, my shorty's from San Fran. She was telling me, like, in the summertime, you go up into the beaches and it'll be, like, 63 at night in the midst of the summer, bro. I'm like, oh, my gosh, bro, that's heaven. <laughs> like, 
I, I don't like summer at all no more, bro. What's that? It's not like that in New York? Bro, I'm not really from up top. Oh, my, yeah, I'm from Miami and all that shit. Oh, yeah. But my, my, pops, my pops is from the Bronx, bro. Oh. So, so I had a funny upbringing. I always tell everybody this, bro. The reason I'm so into New York, though, because to me, New York's the mega no matter what, bro. That's like, my dad had us come up there every Christmas from 9-5 up until 2001, bro. So we saw, we saw, okay, we went earlier in 2001. So we saw the towers in August. See, you feel me? In 2001, we saw them in August. That was the service. That's the last time I was in New York until 2020. So I saw the towers for the last time. And at 17 years old, bro, I was blunted up. And it was like 8.50, whatever time it was, bro. And then we, we, they were like, turn the TV on. Everybody stand up. Everybody sit down. Everybody shut up. And the bomb bomb, they 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 turn the TV on, bro. And one of them towers already hit, bro. They're just smoking. We all like, what is even going on? We're just I'm I'm 13 years, I'm 17 years old, bro. I still don't know what bro, I don't know shit about government and nothing like that. Like, bro, we watched that bitch go. Oh, were bro. you in Miami? Did, okay, real quick. When I'm 17, I'm in I'm in South Carolina. Oh, okay. So I, I moved literally, bro. 2002, I was in, in South Florida. So literally four months later or whatever, three months, whatever it was. Damn. So, I, we, bro, we turned the TV on, we watched the tower, and it's like, bam. And we just all, like, we just looking at the TV, bro. We just kids, bro. We just like, the fuck? <laughs> yeah, just to go back to the 9-11 shit, man, that shit was fucked up. I remember getting dropped yeah. out of school and nobody was at school, bro. And I remember one lady was like, didn't you hear and my mom was like, what? And they're like, the fucking towers got hit. And my man, I'm like, the fucking towers. You know, I'm a little ass kid. I'm like, the fucking towers got hit. I'm like, what the fuck does that mean? Is that cold or some shit? Like, what the fuck? But like, there was nobody there. They canceled school and everything, bro. They didn't know if Osama bin Laden was going to drop another bomb on fucking LA or some shit like that. Like, we didn't know what the fuck was going on. Bro. That's crazy, dog. Yeah, they shut everything down, bro. It was mad crazy, dog. That's, I mean, we, we, we you know, we could talk about, what really happened some other day though but like yeah man, oh yeah it'd be a whole nother podcast we're gonna be like yeah alex, yeah we're gonna be like alex jones and shit nah, yeah, like helicopters and all that shit. i don't want to go there bro you know? i really yeah i don't feel like going there either but going back to yeah the the griselda on steroids tour i still have that shirt i should have wore it. i didn't even know we we're gonna talk about that shit but I bro i mean yeah. bro i saw i saw conway and benny with dj shay bro and it was Ooh, I, I saw I saw them too. I saw Fleet Lord. It was in Richmond, bro. They were all in a, a Dodge Caravan, bro. You saw them? Oh, you saw them? You didn't even see them in a show? No, I saw them in a show, and when they oh. left, I was like, these dudes are running hip hop. It's 2018, it's October, and Conway is, you know. Oh, that yes, was when Me Lord dropped the uh, Lord Talk Volume Two, bro. That album is hard. That's that's a dope ass album. Yo, listen, dog. Those boys. I called Conway Cannon. That's what I called him. I called him Cannon. Wow. He probably and he looked was like, like, like motherfucker. I ain't Cannon, but this is Conway. That nigga was, bro. That nigga embraced me, bro. He's like, yo, ain't no nigga, no. Like he just like dab me up, bro. And like he used to, yo, that, I'll be real with you. That's my favorite rapper. Period. Period. I that's my favorite rapper. Period. Yeah, because um, yeah. Conway, Conway, like, there's nobody, there's nobody who's come out like Conway with his shit. Yeah. Bro, like, no one, no one's been through what Conway's been through, bro. Who? I mean, I mean, Twenty One Savage got shot like seven times, but that I mean, nigga, bro, I, mean, I don't, don't, don't compare that, bro. You wait, we had a combo over Twenty One anyway. <laughs> Oh man, I already knew that one was coming, bro. I already knew where that was. You going. Did, you knew that was going to give me a, <laughs> a reaction. That was going to give me a reaction. Yo, <laughs> but yeah, no, no, you're right though. No one, no one did come. You know, no one did uh, survive getting hit in the head. Um, no one's ever gotten Bell's palsy and rap like him and shit. But besides that, um, I remember listening to Conway, not even knowing what he looked like. Nah, none of that shit. Really? Yeah, bro. Because I'm not. Especially like when I was like in high school, 
I wasn't up on everything like that. I wasn't there, was, like, especially like where it was. Like now, you go on YouTube and you know everything. You know what people look like, fucking what what fucking food they like eating. You know what I mean? You know, what <laughs> that shit. You, know you know what kind of sneakers they like and all this. Right, right. Like right. Back, back. I mean, and I'm saying you know back then, like the fucking this was ten years ago, but back just a few years ago, the the culture really wasn't like that, bro. It was kind of like, especially for me, it was like. Right. Like, is the music dope? Can they rap? Like, is this like good music? Like, that's all I give a fuck about. Right. So, you know, when I, I'm listening to, I'm just put this album on, you know, uh, 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 I inhale the last L run on hell steps. Uh, uh, some, you know, uh, ah, man, he's like, fuck, I'm really fucking up with the lyrics, but he's like, uh, is Conway? Yeah, eating pasta like a mobster, silk pride of pajamas. I gotta be out of my fucking mind. You know, like when I heard that yeah. shit, I was like, who the fuck is this? Bro? And I remember like always going back and forth. Like, like one week I would think Wes is better, and then the next week I would think Conway's better. So it was mm. kind of like it was just dope for me, man. But just going back to like the Griselda the apartment at 4B. Word. I didn't think there would be that many fans, bro. In 2017, there was like a line around the building, like around the block, bro, to, to see them, bro. And so many people were were walking by, like, who the fuck is like, what are y'all in line for? Like, people thought the new Jays had dropped and shit. Like, did the, the the fucking retro force come out and shit? Like, that's so funny, bro. That's and classic. I was, yeah, bro. And I remember people were like, uh, what are you in line for? I'm like, oh, we're here to see uh, West Side Gun and Conway. And they were like, who? Like, what the? They're like, yeah, bro. Like, get the fuck out of here, bro. Go go fucking get a cheesecake at Cantor. Bro. <laughs> Whatever the fuck you came here for, bro. Because you, <laughs> you could tell these these white people were like, what, like what's going on? And it's like, the fuck? Why do you care, dude? Like, uh, right. I, remember, uh, uh, I don't know yeah. if you know, know who RJ is, but there's a rapper named RJ. Uh, he goes by Mr. L.A. Um, no. Nah. Uh, uh, he's he's from uh, he's from Athens Park. He's a I probably shouldn't say he's a blood, but fuck it. I, everyone knows he's a blood, but he's a he's a well known rapper from out here. And I remember he tried just walking in like apartment four B, and they wouldn't let him. Like I don't know who was at the door, like uh, uh, right. you know, letting people in. But uh, yeah, they 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 wouldn't let him in. They they told him. They told him, you know, you got to get in line or some shit like that. And RJ was like, man, what the fuck? Like, to, to, to yeah. it, like, bro, that's like literally a fucking, like, just, just to put, give you an example. That's like if, if fucking, I don't know, like, like, let me just, like, let me pick an artist you would know. Like, that's like. So, so he had clout. He had clout. Like, like he's yeah, known. like he had, he was known, bro, especially there. Like my cousin, he was like kind of like, like, oh shit, there's RJ, Mr. LA, and all that shit. Like he was like, like, yo, we got RJ in the building and all this. You know, my cousin was super hyped. He was like, what? Like That's he was funny. super hyped off that shit. Bro, that'd be like if fucking if like if fuck man, I'm really trying to, I'm I'm really trying to like. That's like if, if El so Camino, if like if El Camino or Fleet Lord tried to get in like a like a Kendrick Lamar pop up shop or something like that, how crazy would that be? You know what I mean? Like if Fleet Lord was just walking by and he seen like a TDE pop up shop and try to get in, it'd be something like that, bro. It was really like what the that's fuck? That's classic, bro. That's it was like wild, a Twilight bro. Zone episode, bro. Like, that's like, wild, bro. Yeah, like two different universes colliding and shit. They're not gonna let him in, basically. Yeah. You know I mean? Uh, it wasn't that they didn't that they weren't gonna let him in, but it was like they're from the east, so they don't know who RJ is. Like, especially at, at this, I mean, yeah. RJ had Mister LA, like he had popping songs. RJ was kind of big out here, bro. I'm, I'm surprised. Sure. By, I'm not surprised at that. Uh, I'm a little uh, lost. Yeah. 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 I, 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 yeah, I'm not surprised that the Buffalo homies didn't know who who, who he was, but it was just kind of like, like, damn, like this is like some special shit going on right here, bro. Like, this is, this is like fucking Griselda meets like underground LA. Like, this is really like 
And RJ, like, just to put in perspective, he was like someone you play like at a at a cracking party or, or just to get like, right. you know what I mean? If you wanted to hit on some girls, you'd play his shit over here. And you know what I mean? Oh, you like RJ? Oh, and then, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know, that'd be like some shit or like all oh, the homies, right. like, yeah, you bumping RJ? Like fucking. True, true. That's crazy, bro. I mean, like they were, I guess they were known for it all that time. He was telling me like, you said West was rapping for a couple, like 10 years. I mean, I saw, I saw all those old Hitlers out earlier, but you know, okay, you know when I really heard about them, bro? When? When Knowledge and Earl Sweatshirt dropped the show, it was September 2016. That's the first time I ever heard of any of these rappers, bro. Ever. Oh, you talking about that 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 Red Bull show or something that they had? Or- it was a, when they both got together for a couple times. It was like the fifth episode. And they played like a Makami. They played all this shit. It was Earl and, Earl and Knowledge were so hyped off these niggas that I, like, it changed my life. I was like, yo, Knowledge. Because, okay, to make it clear to everybody here, to me, Knowledge is the number one beat maker of like all times. Like, <laughs> to me, I'm just saying, in my opinion. He's dope. That, He's definitely. Knowledge like- is that, that, I don't know what's up with him right now, but. Yeah, that's like the epitome of like my soul when it comes to rapping. Like that's the sound. That's 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 where it's at. That's 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 the that's the lane I want to stay on. But when I saw them boys premiere them like that, and they were playing, you know, all this back to back mock, back to back West and Conway, I was like, these dudes, who who are these rappers, bro? They're out of nowhere, bro. What's in the comment section at YouTube? You could go back to that YouTube video still. It's like. Everybody's like timestamping, like who the fuck's this? Who's who? And it's Makami's HBO before it even came out, bro. Oh yeah, cause, and I think that was that wasn't even the the mix he ended up using for his album or something like that. Yeah, it was like a bootleg version of uh, I forgot what song it was, but um, the yeah, I remember, yeah, I remember, I remember uh, when they dropped that, um. But I'd already been. I had already been. I was late, man. I was late. I was late, man. It was 2016. 2016 was like when I first heard those names, and I was like, "Yo, the lanes changed. Like the games changed." I was like, it's a, "That's a whole different world of MC. We didn't see in like ten years. We haven't seen this many. I don't know, bro. I don't. I haven't seen this many nice rappers. Even like you said right now, like now, like back then in, in, in YouTube, you can type in Griselda and get all these results." You know, I remember when you could type in Griselda, you get like two interviews, four or five interviews. Yeah. And like uh, maybe they, 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 the, 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 the rejects that were out by that time, all the reject versions and all those, that was it. And Bro, I remember when the, the Conway freestyle on Shade 45, the, yep. the freestyle where he's like, watch how you talk to me, you get your job broke. When I speak, it's like the Lord spoke, homie, the safety on the floor broke. Fuck your best. I ain't aiming at your torso. It's a wig shot when the fall blow. Like, bro, that's how fucking much I remember that shit, bro. Because I remember the day it came out, bro. Like, I was just that's like, wild. bro, the new, Conway, yo, the new Conway freestyle. I was like, bro, it's, it's going to be some shit. And he smoked that shit. Wes didn't even bother rapping. And I'm like, no. Nah. No, and those everybody was hyped in that studio, bro. Everybody knew what was going on in that studio, bro. They knew, man. They they all know like that shit was finna change, bro. You know what I mean? It, yeah, and I, no, no bro. other artists had have made an impact like they did. You nah. know, like rock rock was already around, rock Marcy was already around. Um well, we could talk about that, bro. That's my favorite topic. Cause if you go on the airways right now, everybody's gonna tell you that. Marcy started this and Wes and them are coming in. Everyone, that's not the truth though. The truth is like, yo, serves. I've been listening to Marciano for a minute. Marciano came out in 98 with like Busta and them in the mixtape era. Flip mode with, squad. With flip mode. Mar- Marcy's been around. Marcy yeah. was part of UN, the UN. Oh, with yeah. Pete Rock. That's when I was listening to Marcy Heavy in, in 2002, three, four, five. So when the hiatus came, which I would say like after 06, no, no, let me, let me stop. Let me stop. Like, like 08, after 08, I, I don't know what happened with MC. Like, after Pap Inside did they thing and all that. Like, I don't know where rapping was going, bro. I don't know. You know, there was your Mac Millers. You had that. You had the, you know. Oh, but Mac Miller was later, though. Like, 
like um yeah there was like a period between like 08 09 like where it was just like what the fuck it was stiff. yeah it was like, much out there yeah the, it was like everything was like in the air but then like around 2010 you you know you had your Wiz Khalifa's your Mac Miller's you had um Sean P was that's when Sean P dropped Mike Tyson right. in 2010 so it was like Everything kind of like boom, like came back like in, in 2010, I feel like. Right. But it wasn't like how when Griselda came, it was just a whole different thing. It was just it's a whole different ball game. Well, we're, we're talking about fucking apples and oranges. And no disrespect to Mac Miller and Recipe, Sean Price, Recipe, all, all these phenomenal artists. But like, we're talking like Wu Tang level of fucking like culture, impactful music. What do you think about Husky and Pay Real Quick? Hus is cool. Um, um, cause when, when I really don't have nothing, nothing bad to say about Hus Kingpin. It, it there is a funny story though. Where I don't know if you want to talk about it. We could talk about it about um, some producer I had beef with did a show, brought Hus Kingpin to open up. I think for Conway and Benny, really Nate Crenshaw, right after Nipsey was murdered at the 420 show. In 2019, and what? literally, I was so I was so hot that I seen this dude. I'm like, this motherfucker. Out of all the shows, out of all the days I see this fool, it's at a fucking Griselda show. And this motherfucker had the nerve to come up to me on the on the second floor, uh, or like where the terrace is. So you like you you're on the top floor. They got champagne and shit. West had brought all the bottles and shit. But I don't know if West was there, but they had a whole bunch of bottles and shit. Uh, that's when I met Keisha Plum. Keisha Plum was there. What? Yeah, bro. And literally, this motherfucker who I who I did not like, he stole like one of my ideas. Uh, oh, I'm fucking getting hot just talking about this. Shit. <laughs> but bro, he, this motherfucker comes up to me and he's like, "You remember me? Like, if this is Carlito's way, like, fuck." He's like, "Remember me?" And I'm like, what? "I don't know if if I should grab this fool and throw him over the balcony." I don't know if I should right. beat this for, but I know this is what's going on in my head. If you beat this, if you whip this fool's ass right here, there's nobody here but the engineer. The engineer's gonna have to get off, interrupt the show, and, right. get, and it's gonna be some like you're gonna in my head. I'm like, you're just gonna fuck the whole show up because you because of this fucking dickhead. So literally, right. I oh, remember uh, I had it was Smoke Fest 420, and I bought the VIP shit. So literally. They gave it when we came in. They gave me uh, early access. They gave me a goodie bag with like two joints, a grinder, some rolling paper, what? and some shit. Yeah, this was like some really ghetto shit, bro. Like this wasn't like this wasn't like no official shit. Like, bro, you could tell like if it was like Conway or, or West or something. They they like planned this shit out. Like, yeah, we're gonna roll up some joints and shit. We're gonna give all the VIP uh, payers or whatever like this little right. goodie bag and shit. You know, I had like a. They gave me like a champagne glass with a strawberry in it and shit like that. Like it, it was some ghetto fly shit. To be honest, now that I'm looking That's back at funny, it. That's funny, bro. That's but I'm wild. Like, I'm drinking. I'm, 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 I'm. That was when I smoked weed too. So I'm smoking. Word. And this fucking idiot. He comes up to me and he's like, "Remember me?" And I remember not even looking at him. And I was like, "I'm just trying to enjoy my show. Like I'm trying what? to enjoy the show." Because if I looked at him and he would have said some dumb shit to me, I would have. I would have. I would have just fucked his ass up. Like I that. felt you, bro. I feel you, man. Damn, bro. That's wild, bro. And, and then you said Hus was there, too? Oh, yeah, because this connects to Hus Kingpin. So he was with Hus Kingpin, and he's all, like, recording Hus Kingpin and shit. Like, he's making a big what? show. Like, rubbing it in my face. Like, oh, I'm here. Like, da ha ha Like, trying to rub it in my face. And I'm literally on the top floor, like, shook night, just looking at this fool, like, like, I can't believe it right. right now, bro. That's and, hilarious. And I remember uh, Big Twins was in the building. Really? He comes up to me and he puts his arm around me because I was mad as fuck. And he's the like, Queens, bro? Uh, huh? Like from QB, Big Twins? Yeah, Big Twins, bro. He, I, I, I know, I don't, I, I forgot like exactly, but he fucked with like Prodigy. Yeah. Him, right? Yeah, Big Twins. Uh, but he comes up to me and he puts his arm around <laughs> arm around me and he's like hey bro are you good because fucking it was funny because i remember being in a vip 
And everyone was looking at me like if I was strapped up or something. I didn't have nothing on me, but everyone was like, because I look like, I don't know, to to like the untrained eye, I probably look like a gangster, like an L.A. gangster or something, which I'm not. Like, I'm not getting a finger and all that shit. But I remember like Shay sitting down and like looking at me like, like, who is this for? You know what I mean? I wish, rest in peace to DJ Shay, man. I really wish I would have said what's up to him. But You never, bro, I said what's up to the man twice, though. Yeah, yeah, he really, really dope, man. But uh, yeah, that's crazy though. Wow, bro, that's wild. That's wild, dog. But, but Big Twins was like, "Yo, like, are you you good? You okay?" And I'm like, "Yeah, bro, I'm good. You know, I'm cool. I'm cool." So that was kind of like, okay, like snap out of it. Like, right, right. Don't go, don't blow this shit out. You know, you have a cool time and shit like that. Um, so from there, I just started drinking heavy, bro. Like, I remember having like, I think I drank a whole bottle, of whatever the fuck they Word. had. I was. Fucked up, bro. Like that's crazy. On belief, bro. Like I was <laughs> intoxicated. You know what I mean, bro. Right. Like I uh, and I remember they had like the goodie bag stash, so I stole like six more joints out of that bag, and I'm just lighting oh, them. Shit, gosh, man, bro. Bro. I'm drinking like a fucking wino, and it was fun, man. That was one of the best shows I ever been to. I wish I would have remembered it more, but uh, and got less faded. But you know, Keisha. Classic, did, yeah, Keisha did one of her. Uh, Poetry, songs, I forgot which one. Um, but I seen Kyle Conway perform, Benny perform, El Camino. Uh he did uh he performed some songs I don't think I've ever heard, like unreleased songs. Who uh El Camino? El Camino? Yeah. Nice, man. Yeah, so uh Bro, like yeah. I I saw him at the Nova, bro. Oh, over here? In at the Nova. Oh, it was shit. the no, the Novo. Uh, it was the seventh of March, bro, and it was two thousand twenty. Twenty twenty. Yeah, man. Right before the pandemic, bro. Pandemic time was mad crazy because the early that the early that year, bro. I put in some work with like I wouldn't just saw these things, bro. Like I wouldn't just put some money up and just went and see them, bro. I was like, I'm never gonna see those three niggas together, bro. You feel me? So it was crazy, though. I went and just lamped up, chilled in L.A. for a little bit. Mm-hmm. And then when pandemic hit, bro, the tickets were down to $15, bro. Damn, that's fucking cheap, dog. A world fucking, a world. Uh, um, uh, what's it called? We're back and forth, whatever. Round trip. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, back, bro, and yes. back and forth. Yeah. Round trip, bro. Round trip, fifteen dollars. So I was like, "Fuck it, I'll just pay for a hotel." Like, Lulu came out. Lulu was coming out. Who's that? The the Conway album with the the shark on it. Oh, that dropped around that time. Uh. So yep. And so I'm in Fairfax and like all that area with my boy. He's opening up a fucking pizza shop. That's why I went out to see him. He he owns a little Chicago pizza shop over there still. And I peeped him, and he's like, yo, you whipping that music hard as fuck. What is that? I'm like, bro, this is that new, new way, bro. And I'm just banging the fucking up, the, up and down Hollywood. The latest HBO, the latest fucking homie edition, just fucking. Bro, I remember um, going to work, and I was bumping uh, Mock Marcy. Uh, Mock Marcy. I think that's right. the song. Da, 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 da. By, by Mock? Yeah, by my off of yeah, and I remember someone rolling the window down was like, "Hey, who's that?" And I'm like, "This my Kami," and I just drove off like fucking like. That's funny. Like, cause the light turned green when he asked me, and I'm like, "This my Kami," and I'm like, "M A C H dash H O M M Y," and I fucking just. <laughs> so shout out to my Kami, yo. You know what I mean? Fucking. Nah, for sure, bro. This, these dudes, all these dudes, already created a, a new like universe, bro. I mean, can't really say much about that, bro. You know what I mean? Like. It's just, uh, you know, I feel like, like, you you feel me? Like, you heard of, uh, I mean, you know the other ones, too. You know what I mean? Like, you know, the, you know, the Davinos and that. You know what I mean? Like. Oh, yeah. But, I mean, like, they, they came out, they came out after. And to be honest, they came after me and Chava Styles. Because if you want to get the dates right, you had Fly God, March 2016. August 2016, you had HBO. They January, uh, uh, not January, um, uh, 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 July of 2017, 
we came out with uh, Picasso and Matisse, me and Chava Styles, and then nice. you know, and and that they had came out with Triple Black Diamonds, but that was 2015. And if you listen to that shit, it sounds nowhere near uh, with the shit that they were doing uh, now or like yeah. a little bit later. Um, but yeah, they came out. They started dropping shit like in 20. 20- 18, I want to say. Um, the only thing that would predate Picasso and Matisse was, I think, Dumb God Divino Edition. I think that was March 2017. So we were like yeah. right there. We were, we were right there uh, with them. Um, so we pulled it's up. crazy. It's kind of crazy. Like, you know, but, like those are our, like, our contemporaries and shit like that. But, uh, you know, I don't, like, as far as like musically, I, I wouldn't really compare myself like to any 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 of those guys respectively it's just kind of like respectfully it's kind of like i just kind of like have my own sound that's like influenced by right. you know what i mean and and uh yeah that shit's just crazy bro like no i mean everybody's gonna have like someone they look up to dog you feel me everybody like i just think like recently now as far as my speeds goes as far as the way i'm writing mm-hmm. i would say yeah um uh, the, I, I feel I've been affected for the past five years of what I've been listening to. You feel me? Mm-hmm. I just think the delivery is way more keen. Obviously, the, the top three, I feel like they've created so many ways to now pronounce words and say things. Like, I feel like, you know, when you're in front of the mic now, bro, you got to be somebody special now. Dog. You know, if you really want to be somebody, dog, you got to have this voice, dog, I feel. You know what I mean? So it's like, like, when I get the critiques, like, the critiques, like, yo, this got to sound sharper, or, like, you sound raw, but this, that, and that, bro, I take all that in, because it's like... Oh, yeah, I, because cause there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of yes, man, there's a lot of people that fucking, like, whatever you put out, like, oh, dude, this is the best shit, it's like, nah, bro, like, you really got to be realistic about your music, right, and, like, how to grow, because if, if you're just going to be like, oh, this is dope, this is dope, this is dope, then, like... Who's to say, like, like, I already know, I've already seen too many times where artists, like local artists that I've known, people tell them, oh, you're dope, oh, you're great, like, you're fucking amazing. And then they get stagnant, they get lazy, they get comfortable, and they feel like, oh, I don't got to put out no more music because they feel like, oh, their shit is dope, everyone should just fucking, like, you know, bow down to them already, and all right. that. And it's like, bro, that... You nobody, bro. Like you just you're a fucking dickhead with one song, bro. Like you nobody right. you. You know what I mean? Unless you fucking go to the gas station for some Dutches and you hear people playing your shit at random times, one in the morning, you know, the fucking four in the fucking morning or something like that. I feel like you're not on, bro. And and, and it's kind of weird how like the culture is now because like a lot of uh people, if you're not up on Griselda, I mean you're you're really not gonna be hearing them. Like you know, in, in gas stations like that, or, or especially in the West Coast. I don't know how it is in, in on the East and all that shit, but I know I, I, at least out here, the only time I heard Griselda on the radio was uh, that DMX song they did. Um, and that was it, bro. That's just kind of lame. Listen, bro, but you see where they're at, though, right? Oh, bro, we don't even got to talk about it. They did songs with fucking Danny Brown. They got signed to fucking Shady. They, they did songs with you know, Conway has a song with Eminem, bro. Eminem. When the fuck did when the fuck did Eminem ever come outside and do a song with anybody? Like besides like all these other popular right, out here. right. Like, and I and that song is one of my favorite songs out of both of them catalog. I mean, like I love that one. Bang I've yeah, heard it once or twice, but uh, uh, I just feel like. When I first heard it, I'm like, okay, like Eminem's gonna spit over some Griselda shit. Then when the beat switched, I was kind of <laughs> like, what the fuck is this, bro? I'm like, yeah, but his verse was crazy nice, bro. Crazy. It was, dope. it was dope, but but to be honest, have you heard the song uh, he got with Buckshot, um, off the Marshall Matters Two LP? I think, I think it's with Buckshot. He sampled the uh, the Don't Front. He sampled the "I Got You Open." The, the song's actually called "Don't Front," but it's it's Eminem. He, they sampled. It's pretty much the same beat. The "I Got You Open," don't right. you know that song? Um, Black Moon, shout out uh, to Buckshot, Five uh, FT, and uh, Evil D, and you know the beat miners and all that. But 
Word, word. Yeah, uh, I still remember Eminem. Uh, like, why doesn't he make more music like this? Like, over just straight up underground shit. And I remember. I got to peep it. I got to peep that one. He said, he said some shit like, even if I have a rocky start, I have a rocky finish. You know, like the boxing. Like, nice. If I have a rocky start, I got a rocky finish. Bro, like Eminem, I understand like his fan base, you know, like I said, I'm sorry, mama. And right. then, you know what I mean? Like he got that shit out, but like, bro, he got to come out with some something for the underground. Bro, shit. it's I like, look. Dr. Dre or something, bro. Do something. Bro, I feel like, okay, so I feel like, okay, I feel like he he felt, I feel like M feels like he did his part already. Mm-hmm. And that, like and then like him doing, like signing Griselda is like, his way of being cool with the underground, but I don't see him get in that zone no more, bro. I feel like he wants to be this like super twister type rapper, like the the fast syllables and oh, he been on that shit. But that's what he's gonna stay at, like just commercially. It's not. I feel like he doesn't want to be a MC Eminem anymore. Like not the MC Eminem Eminem no more. It's not gonna be a you know, Slim Shady LP rapper in the order, Marshall Mathers one, mm-hmm. greatest greatest album ever anyway. But like, he's not gonna do that no more, bro. It's just, I don't know. And I'm about to peep. And, and the don't front, I'm about to peep that. I want to hear that, so I'm gonna listen to that. But yeah, for sure, I'll, I'll fucking uh, send it to you. But you know, but I don't think I don't think he cares no more. I don't think he cares no more. I don't think he wants I to. I don't think that it's not that he don't care no more. It's just his fan base is so mainstream at this point. Like, he just cannot go back, bro. Like, like I feel like what he did on that song with Conway was try to get his fans on the Griselda shit because Eminem's good. You know, he got fans worldwide. He's got, he's got fucking, you know, uh, he can't even, he can't even go outside without paparazzis on bikes and shit doing driving. Right. Fucking, you know? Right, right. Eminem is just a s- fucking super duper star, you know what I mean? And, it, and I feel like, he was trying to help Griselda out more because the Griselda co-sign don't really do shit for Eminem. You know, like Eminem Ben had like the backpackers and, and you know, the yeah. underground. Like, we all know who Eminem is. You know what I mean? Like, Eminem really has little to gain from signing Griselda other than having some sort of like street ties or something like that. But even then, it, you don't need that shit, bro. Like, really, I feel like he just gave Griselda a look, a good look for with that, bro, with just signing them. And, you know, a lot of people would say, you know, uh, 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 Eminem dropped the ball and all, all this shit. But to be honest, bro, whether what, what he did just by signing them, it took those, it took Griselda further than a fucking, I don't want to name names, but let's just say like a bad boy. It took them further than a fucking right. t- Took them further than all this other shit you could think true. of. It's honest. true. It's true. No, it's true. Because, I mean, M helped a lot, man. But, again, like, a lot of them are scrambling right now, right? Like, Conway's not signed, right? Conway's not signed, is he? Uh, um, God Don't Make Mistakes was his last album, Contraction. Right. So that was his last album. Uh-huh. But he's got his own label. He's got drum work. So... But that's signed to what? That's under something else. It's not like I I think he owns it. That's his shit. That's that's his label. Hmm. You know I, mean? I don't know if the I, I don't know if it's like a subsidiary of Universal or like I think it's something, but it might be, but but all I'm saying is, bro, um you look at Griselda before, they were doing songs with like Sky Zoo, they were doing songs with Static Selector, all these like underground cats, but what was he really doing? You know what I mean? Like, here's, the, here's the truth. Here's the truth, though. Once, like, I'll keep it real, bro. Even before M brought him up, bro, like, even at 16, M didn't sign him, bro. Like, they were still blowing up, dog. Like, 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 it took dudes like Knowledge to throw out their names and shit like that, dog. Like, everybody knew these guys were coming up, bro. Like, everybody knew, bro. Like, but when like that- the shady thing, it brought them to a whole different light. You get what I mean? Like, if if I'm performing at fucking, you know, Webster Hall, fucking, you know, uh, 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 
what's that shit? Uh, Hammerstein Ballroom and shit like that. That's great. If I get the, if you go on Madison Square Garden, you know what I mean? The biggest of the biggest. We're talking about the biggest fucking stage in the world or whatever the fuck, right? It, it, Pretty much. You got more eyes looking at you than you would all these other places. No disrespect to all these other places. Right. But if I'm at the Novo, if I'm at Echo Echoplex, that don't mean shit. If I'm at the Staples Center, right. that's where you want to be. Fuck the fucking Verizon Amphitheater. Fuck the Irv. Fuck all these places, bro. You at where where it, you need to be. You at the Staples Center. You were with Kobe shooting threes. You fuck right. Michael Jackson did the moonwalk and shit like that. Right, right, right. Tyson knocked out what's his face Holmes or whatever the fuck. Yeah. You know what right. I mean? It, it, it's just it, my point is just kind of like you gotta be. You, you got to be like where it counts. You know what I mean? Okay, and, right. I'm not saying before that it didn't count before, but when they signed Shady, they did the fucking, they started doing, they started doing fucking national tours. Right. Camino uh, started dropping his albums. Flea Lord started dropping his albums. Fucking Conway got his, got his label. Uh, Benny got Black Soprano family. He does, he got the joints with Premier. I mean, yeah. And I don't right know. Now? I don't want to diss uh, all the other Griselda members like Camouflage Monk and shit, but it's just kind of like, like, what are they doing? And I, and I don't mean it like that. Like, what are you like? What are y'all doing? But it's just kind of like, you know what I mean? They, 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 they definitely in a way bigger position right now, man. Like, it's super big. You know what I mean? Like, you know what I thought? You know when I realized it was big? When? When uh, Ten Crack Commandments came out from Benny. Oh, and so then, back commandments? Right, right. And like and you got Diddy towards the end. <laughs> so it's like, wow, bro. Like, what a I mean, crazy, bro. You know, you got Diddy over here talking all this craziness. But um, I was like, yo, these dudes definitely are like everybody knows who Griselda is. They have to. Who doesn't know who Griselda is now at this point, bro? At least if you're an MC, if you're a rapper, if you're into rap. You kind of know who Griselda is, you know what I mean? Like, if you don't, you're just under a rock, under the right. street, under the fucking moon. You understand? Or you just don't listen to anything else besides trap. You know yeah, what I mean? you, yeah. You listen to fucking, you listen to uh fucking polka music and shit. <laughs> you just listen to some bullshit. That's all the fuck. I know. <laughs> That's crazy, bro. I mean, the game shifted though, man. That's good. It's good. It's shifted, man. Like, yeah, bro. Good. Like, it's good it's shifted. But but to be honest, I feel like the game is going, it's like it's leaving like the Griselda shit is like not dying, but it's like, you know what I mean? We're coming at this point where it's already like, like what else can they do? You know what I mean? Like unless they link up with like a fucking or oh, didn't or oh, what you said Wes has a song with Travis Scott, right? Yeah, well that's that's garbage. Oh yeah, fuck if it's garbage. It's like, it's like <laughs> what else if it's, what, what what else are they gonna do now? Like they did a s- song with Travis Scott. Like, bro, they just uh, gotta keep it. rapping on trap beats. Bro, listen, listen, dog. That's the issue with fans, dog. I'm gonna keep it a thousand, man. Like, if you're not obsessed with the music, bro, you just gonna get easily bored. Like, so it's like, you know, there's a lot of like relatability to music right or not you know is, is there like like i heard what say it like when you show up to a show you got dudes that like they did a bid like they just came out from doing a bid then he says there's dudes that you know they're graffiti writers they're drawlers they could draw they're geeks basically he's basically saying he's like there's everything in between when you hear this music bro. he's like you got the beat makers that are showing up you got the up and coming rappers that are showing up bro you know, you got the dudes who are just spectators, DJs. Like, hip-hop is like, bro, you got to just love the shit, dog. Like, if someone's sitting there like, yo, it's been five years, what else is these things going to bring to the game? Dog, you might as well off yourself because what are you waiting for the next Big Bang? You can't see it that way. That music is a vibe, bro. It's a, it's a life, bro. It's just like, that shit won't die unless you let it die, dog. You feel me? Like... That's just just me being real, a thousand though, because it's like. Well, what I'm sir, saying, just, like, like real quick, real quick, everybody's on it, bro. Mm-hmm. Everybody wants to do hip hop right now, bro. There's a little bit more since these guys came out. There's a little bit more of an underground scene in everybody's motion. There's more younger kids that want to 
make beats. This, this sounds boom bap. There's just 92 BPMs. They want to do that now. There's a lot less the vibe of wanting to sound Southern anymore, bro. That's what I'm, I'm seeing. I get what, what I, I totally agree with what you're saying, but what 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 I'm comparing now with the Griselda shit too is like this is like what I'm saying Griselda in this this new age of like trap and, and and all this stuff that's still going on like the the Gunners and Lil Baby and all that shit it's kind of like where Wu Tang was at with the Bling era and the Breakdance era because it's like. You know, I'm sure a lot of hip hop heads were like, well, what the fuck? Like, what's going to come out now? You know what I mean? Um, but uh, we definitely got to we definitely got to close this out. This was a crazy conversation, but let's uh, <laughs> let's close it out. You know what I mean? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Fucking, is there anything you want to leave off with the uh, with the fans and, and, and everybody out there that listens? All the listeners? Bro, I mean... I'm going to still keep working, bro. I'm going to still keep um, providing everybody with an update, you know, some music. I just do the SoundCloud. Tell, them where, they, tell them where to get at you. Yo, sirs, we could, we got a lot more episodes coming, bro. Why not? You know what I mean? We do. We do. Like, yo, you're just looking at, you know, a very rare concept and music is going to be coming out. Yours truly serves a part of it as well. You know what I mean? Sure. There's going to be a like you were saying, bro, what's next? We next. That's why I just got to say, we we all of us are next. I'll say collectively, you know what I mean? I go by the name of One Voice. I'm one half of Judge Mankind. Um, you can come visit me on Idol, just like iPhone, but you put I lowercase in the D-U-L-L for doll. So Idol, and then it'll come right up. On SoundCloud. So, on SoundCloud, or just put it on, on Google. You can type it in like that in Google. It'll probably be the second result on there so um there's a lot of hot shit coming out man just like just you know we just doing music a little bit more tougher than the average mc you know what i mean that's just that's what we're here for bro like you know what i mean this is it this is it so, bro so what are you working on any anything else anything you got coming um i played you that little person i think i sent you in a i think a video of my boy rapping it was like some fast rap i don't know if you remember that um, it was like some tongue twister. Joints. It was like some tongue twister rap, but it was my boy. But we both working on a little EP right now. You know, I'm just dropping boy like beats on the SoundCloud here and there. So, you know, I'll keep y'all updated. You know, but just D, you know, I D U L L. You mm -hmm. know, you can look me up. That's the producer name. And then, uh, you know, that's it. You know, like. You gonna hear some more opinions, <laughs> facts, oh, sure. stories, stories, facts. I mean, like the truth, bro. I mean, one voice. We here, man. For sure. Well, I would like to thank you for your time and word and everything, bro. I, I appreciate you uh, uh, joining in on the podcast, and and you know this was this was dope, bro. We definitely got to get uh, more episodes in. You know, I hit you up. You feel me? Uh, Let's do it. Let's I'll, I'll do definitely it. Uh, uh, play something at the end so the, the listeners can have like a good introduction of what you know you got going on. You know what I'm saying? You you got some or like or like a mine or not? You want me to send you some? Um, you could send me something, but I was thinking I could put like the West Side Doom remix on. Uh, I could play that at the end. Oh, that's 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 real. That's real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's real loud right there. That's cool. But you could you could send me like whatever, like you know. nah, you could do, let them have that right now. All right, cool. Right, cool. Right, right, right. Well, for sure, man. Thank yeah. you, home boys. Hey, um, listen, thank sir. Thank you again for you know inviting me. It was, it was a pleasure, man. It's an honor and all. Like there needs to be more of this going on. You know what I mean? So you know, I'm out, I'm out here. Everybody knows now. I'm out here in Vegas, so. Come touch down, touch down if you need to. You know what I mean? You see one voice, tell him, tell him serve set was good. Word. Throw some <laughs> fucking hash in the bomb. Throw, throw ice <laughs> in that bitch. Yeah, you want me? Can I can I hit it for the for the masses or not? Nah? You could hit it if you want. I, 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 you were hold, you was holding that shit like a like a machine gun shit. Yo, sir, I've been waiting like the whole time. I wasn't even one of those Bro, you could have, bro. You could have smoked the whole time. I, been like, I was bro. like really waiting the whole time though. <laughs> Bro, hit that shit. You got to hit All that right. shit. One time? And one yeah. time for the one time. One time for the folk. There he goes. Look at that.
damn, like a soldier. <laughs> yeah, we go, we go end it off like that, man. All right, brother. Salute, bro. Salute. Salute, man. Hit me up, man. I'm here, man. One voice again. Judge Mankind. Big Serbs, thank you again, bro. For sure, bro. Thank you. All right, salute, bro. Yeah, bro. Peace. Peace. One. Smash Max was the turn out of my lifestyle. Smoking green, blowing white clouds to build the blue skies. Conversating with the gods by my wildflower huh? to let them know that it's the gods I would. This love's the never ending saga. Gods by my wildflower huh? to let them know that it's the gods I would. This love's the never ending saga. Gods by my wildflower huh? to let them know that it's the gods I would. This love's the never ending saga. Gods by my wildflower huh? to let them know that it's the gods I would. This love's the never ending saga. Walk through the sands of times like Gara on the other side of that gat is karma, he wet prada, the devil like inside your box now, while the angels fly over my headstone.